At the end of every one of my videos, I tell you guys to keep making great music, and a big part of that is learning elements of songwriting and not just specific licks and lead parts, chords, whatever it is. And so I got into this lesson here where we're gonna analyze how songs are put together in a specific way, and I just wanna say before I start the lesson that I got really surprised doing this one. I went into it expecting a certain thing to happen with chord progressions here with these songs, and as I went into the process of analyzing and learning the song so I could teach the lesson, I discovered I was completely wrong. And that's a cool thing about doing these lessons is that when I'm doing them, I'm learning as much as I'm teaching, and I love that about music. So I'll explain how that happened a little further into the lesson. Anyway, so you want to write hit songs, have millions of fans, and tour the world in your own jet? But well, one way to get there is to write big anthemic choruses like these bands. The thing is, they didn't write them alone. Back in the 80s, there were a few genres of music that dominated the charts, but the one that I was into by and far the most was what people now refer to as hair metal. And one of the primary characteristics of this music was the big anthemic chorus, and especially so after Bon Jovi's massive hit Slippery When Wet came out. And what I found out later was that a lot of what was on Slippery When Wet and a lot of what came after it and even a couple things before it were co-written with this one guy that was kind of the factory of these anthemic choruses and that was Desmond Child. So what we're going to do today is take a look at what Desmond uses as a writing tool that I'm calling the Return Home Chorus and used it on all those songs and even continues through to today. And welcome to Music with Marky. What do living on a prayer, I hate myself for loving you, and waking up in Vegas all have in common? Well, it's two things. And one is that they were all co-written by Desmond Child. Maybe you want to write a hit song like one of these too, but I don't think any of us are going to get the chance to work with Desmond Child anytime soon. So let's look at what the second thing is that they all have in common. Well, this is where I got really surprised during this video. I went into analyzing these songs, expecting there to be a certain jump in the interval of the chord progressions from verses to choruses, because they have that big lift and that anthemic sound. I was expecting something like, say, if the verse was E, B, A, I was expecting the chorus then to jump to maybe like a C, a sixth. You know, that's got that kind of lift. So maybe jumping to the fifth or the sixth or something that has a lifting kind of quality to it. I was wrong. What I discovered here is what I'm now calling the return home chorus. And that's that every one of these songs starts on the root note of whatever key it's in, major or minor. And then the chorus just returns home to the root, the same place the song started and the verses started. It doesn't vary. No jump needed to make that lift. So let's take a look at a few of his songs that he co-wrote that are massive hits and look at the examples of how they're put together and how they end up being return home choruses. So the first song I wanted to look at was Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. It's got that big anthemic chorus that everybody screams along with at bars. And I was figuring when I went into it, getting to that chorus with that big lift like it seems to have, that the jump would be, like I said before, like a fifth or a sixth or something like that. Nope, this song is in E minor. It has that famous opening riff that he does with the talk box. The and underneath it, you have the keys and the other guitar. Just leading up from C to D to E. This basic pattern continues through the verse, although it's just the chords then. The now the pre-chorus goes away from the E as the first note, but it still just keeps climbing from C to D to E. And then he ends right before the chorus on the D, leaving you hanging for the E that you're already expecting. Then we jump to the chorus and you've just got the E and the whoa, we're halfway there. Again, ending on D, leaving you hanging for the E, where it comes right back to the E root note, but with the riff. Let's take a look at another one. Now I go down the list a little bit and find another song that I know and like from Joan Jett, I Hate Myself for Loving You. Let's see if this one jumps to a different part for its anthemic chorus. This song's also in E minor and it starts with the guitar kind of playing what's gonna become the vocal riff in the chorus. All resolving back to the E there. And then it comes into the verse where it's just chugging in the chords, a basic one, four, five, and E, the E to A to B. And again, for the pre-chorus, it breaks away. You've got where it goes to G every night. Might as well be a dominant five there. 
resolving right back to the E for the one. I hate myself for loving you, one, four, five. And then it does a pause at the end of the chorus, and right back to E where the guitar picks up what she was singing. So the whole thing returns home to the root note for the chorus and jumps right back in again at the root note for the verse. Now I'm gonna jump ahead in time to something much more modern. It's not even in the rock genre. This is the Katy Perry song, Waking Up in Vegas. And so I went into this, again, not knowing what the chord progressions were or anything. Let's just see if it was something different. And it ends up being the same exact thing again. With the Katy Perry song, we start, uh, the whole song's in the key of F and it fades into an F chord with some guitars and other instruments. So you've just got that fade in. And the bass comes in. And the basic progression in the verses is all around the F while the bass is doing its thing over the top of it. It's just F, D, and B flat. And again, just for a brief moment in the pre-chorus, it breaks away so it can set itself up to come back to F again. In the pre-chorus you have C, D, and B flat. And then right back to the chorus. where she's going, shut up, shut up. And then back to the verse again, it just goes right back to the F. So again, it's returning home for the chorus and it's using that riff element when you get back to the verse or the intro to the verse so that it would sound a little bit different even though it's not. So every one of these songs uses the same mechanism. You've got an intro riff of some sort in the root key, the verse stays right in that root. There's a pre-chorus that briefly goes away, but leads right back to the root note again where the chorus is at, and then you just start the whole thing over. Where the lift happens is that on the verses, the vocal part is somewhere around the root of the chord, maybe the third, and when you get to the chorus, the singing starts at a higher note, either the third if it was on the root, or the fifth instead, so that the home note for the vocal part is higher than it was in the verses. And this stuff is pretty simple, but really important to understand. If you're trying to write original music, of course you always have this kind of need to create things anew, but most of the time you will be inadvertently reinventing the wheel. So it's good to know what's come before, and it's good to know if you really want to reach out for that anthemic chorus or whatever kind of chorus you're looking for, whatever part you're looking for, how it's been done by others in the past so that you can utilize similar mechanisms instead of just kind of fumbling into them by accident. I can't fix a thing if I, I don't know what it is I'm, I'm trying to fix. Basically what I'm saying is learn how songs are written, learn the way they put the progressions together, the same way you've gone about learning specific guitar licks and scales. Anyway, I hope all this made sense and you get something out of it. It helps you with your own songwriting. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll get back to everybody as soon as I can. And as I mentioned at the beginning, keep making great music. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.